today is supposed to be about holding effective meetings and problem solving. We may not get to problem solving because I want to make sure that we spend a lot of time on effective meetings since um, that's what we have coming up. So, a lot of people hate meetings. I hate meetings. But only because I feel like a lot of times they're not effective. I don't mind going to an effective meeting. It's the ones where I feel like I'm wasting my time. Those are the ones I despise. Um, but we have to remember that meetings can be very valuable because that's where a lot of communication goes on. That's where information is shared. Um, that's where we do team building and we build interpersonal relationships. So meetings are important despite how much we might hate them. It's a necessary activity. You have to have them. Think about a business that you can run without a meeting. Can anybody think of one? Regardless of if it's healthcare or construction or business or banking, all of those industries all need to have meetings at some point. Now, how often they have them, that may vary, but the fact still remains that each of those types of industries all need meetings at some point. It's an essential activity. Um, you know, again, this is where sometimes problem solving occurs in meetings, brainstorming. Um, so important things happen in meetings, and that's why we need them. Again, regardless of what department you end up in, whether it's a hospital or healthcare organization, typically each department is going to have meetings, even down to the dietary and maintenance. They have meetings as well. Um, now, because we know that meetings are important, we must have them, especially in a healthcare environment, we have to make sure that they're efficient and effective because as healthcare managers, we're always busy. We always um, need more time to do things. So knowing that, we have to make sure that we make our meetings effective as possible. And as managers, more than likely, you guys will be the ones that are conducting the meetings. So it'll be very important for you all to make sure that um, they're efficient and effective. So again, to kind of just go through why we have meetings, number one, to share information. We just talked about that one. Maybe there's a new uh, piece of equipment or um, a new tool that we're using. We may have a meeting to make sure that everybody's on the same page about that piece of equipment or um, this new policy that you know the hospital just implemented. So sharing information. Number two, explaining policies, uh, laws, systems, or restructuring activities. Um, Maybe we just started a new lockdown where we lock all the doors after 9 p.m. and you have to be buzzed in. Whatever it may be, again, a meeting is a great place to discuss that, to make sure that everybody knows about it, everybody's on the same page. Number three, accept reports or recommendations. And number four, make decisions. A lot of times decisions will be made in meetings. Um, this is where, you know, something may be voted on, or something may be proposed and decided <coughs> within the meeting. So a lot of times decisions do take place in meetings. Here are a few other ones. Sometimes meetings are held to persuade. Maybe there's, again, a new policy that no one likes. No smoking, no more smoking on campus. They might have persuasion in the meeting to try to get everybody on board with that new policy. Or we may be trying to gain commitment from our employees. So we, we have a meeting to try to get their commitment on something that be, may be going on in the hospital. Teaching or training, obviously that should be given. If there's a new, uh, <clears throat> uh, a new type of care that we're going to uh, apply to our patients, maybe we're going to use a different type of bandages for the wounds. A meeting is a great place to talk about that and even showcase how to, how to do that, which is, you know, demonstrating or explaining. Congratulate. Again, meetings shouldn't always be boring. It's okay to have a meeting to congratulate Peppy for finishing her degree. Sound good. Sound good, right? <laughs> so meetings can be held to congratulate or reward. We already talked about them being held to solve problems. 
allocated resources. This is a good one. Sometimes, um, you know, a few times when I worked in Florida and, you know, a storm was coming, we would have a meeting to allocate resources, um, meaning we're going to take two people from our department we're going to send them to the department on the fourth floor because they, they are in need of staff. So sometimes you may need to move some things around. A meeting is a great place to do that. Prepare plans. If you have something coming up, we can think about today, the example of the spring, what is it called? Spring fling. Spring fling. There we go, spring fling. We may have a meeting to prepare the fact that some of the parking lots are going to be closed and we have to decide how we're going to reroute traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Status priorities. Again, I'll use the example of a Florida hospital who may meet to decide how they're going to prepare for this storm that's coming and what priorities need to take place. Generate ideas. Maybe we have an issue and we need to have a meeting to figure out how we're going to solve it. You know, we do case studies every week where we're trying to figure out how to solve something. A lot of times these case studies that you guys do in class are similar to what happens in the meeting when there's a situation or issue that needs to be solved. And assigning task. Again, I see the assigning task one as maybe there's a meeting held at the beginning of the day um, and you're deciding who's going to do what that day. Maybe you're short staffed, somebody's out sick. Um, or you have more patient volume than you expected. So you need to have a staff meeting, a quick staff meeting to assign tasks for that day. So these are all um, reasons to have a meeting. I'm sure there are other reasons, but these are some good ones, I think. So what is a meeting made up of? And we probably never think about these things when we walk into a meeting. We just kind of walk in and sit down. But as a manager, these are the types of things that you have to think about, again, because you're probably going to be the one putting the meeting together. So, purpose. Without a purpose, we probably shouldn't have a meeting. Because a purpose is the reason for the meeting. If you don't know why you're having a meeting, don't have one, right? Because then we're wasting time. So number one, purpose. Another component of a meeting is going to be the input and content. What are those things? Well, that's the leader, the person that's conducting the meeting, the attendees, that's gonna be your agenda, your handouts, any visual aids that you have. If you're having a PowerPoint, um, that's going to be where you're having the meeting, the facility room, um, objectives, facts, and opinions. Those are all input and content. Um, third component is process. What is a process? Well, it's the actual presentation of the meeting. It's the discussion that takes place in the meeting. If there's any um, bargaining or negotiation going on in the meeting, voting, that's all a part of the process component. Product, well, think about it. The product is going to be the result. What happens? So problem solved. Decisions made, were there any compromises? Was anybody, did anybody commit to anything? Any commitments made? So basically the product is what happened, your results. And then the last thing is the responses and the follow-up. This is going to be what actions are taken. Um, what information was provided to the attendees? and were there any other people affected by those decisions. So that's kind of the, the wrapping up part. So um, these are the five components, main components of a meeting. Anybody have any questions about those? So what that means is I should probably see these components at some point throughout your project. So as managers, how do we prepare? How do we prepare? Well, obviously we have to have an agenda. Agenda is going to help us stay on task. And for the attendees, it's going to show them what's to come. When they come in and sit down, they should be able to see an agenda to see exactly what's going to take place in this meeting. Right? Mm -hmm. 
we gotta set a day at a time. It might sound easy, but especially if you're working with a large group, it may not be as easy because you have to set a day at a time that's going to be as convenient as possible, remembering that no day, no time is gonna be perfect for everybody. But you still wanna try to set a day and time that is as convenient as possible for the masses, for most people. Secure facilities. Again, it sounds easy, but in the hospital it can be pretty difficult because you have so many different departments that also all have to have meetings. And so you're trying to find a room that's open, um, that's not being used by someone else. So that's why it's key that you do this stuff in advance. Because trying to, even, even here sometimes, trying to secure a room to have a meeting, it can be difficult if you wait until the last minute. Um, so you wanna secure a facility or a location. You wanna select the attendees. This is important because you don't want people to be in the meeting that don't need to be there. Um, they're not gonna pay attention if they're in there. They're probably gonna be disruptive if they don't need to be there. Um, and remember, meetings more than likely are when you're on the clock. So if you have all these people in the meeting that don't need to be in there, you're wasting your organization's dollars. So you wanna make sure you select um, attendees that need to be there and that you don't forget about somebody that does need to be there. That's now on your list. Select a recorder. Um, you want to make sure that you have someone that is able to um, document what goes on in the meeting because you want to make sure you have minutes. And distribute the agenda in advance. This is important and not everybody does this, but I think it's pretty key because when you do this, people are able to look over it and see if something needs to be added or taken off of the agenda. Typically, the way I see it is most people will send the agenda out one to two days in advance to all the attendees so they can know what to expect, know how much time to allot for the meeting, et cetera, et cetera, or say, um, you know what, we should probably add X, Y, Z to the agenda. No, I don't see it on here. So make sure you send it in advance. Keyword here is advance. Make sure you do all of this ahead of time. Um, it's important, don't wait until the last minute. So if anybody wants to send me an agenda for me to look over, that would be great. Um, conducting the meeting, start on time. Why do we start on time? That everybody's time is precious. Everybody's time is precious. What else? It's good business if you start on time. It's good business if you start on time. Um, it shows that you're serious about whatever it is that um, you're discussing. Again, also, depending on the facility, um, someone may be coming in after you. So if you don't start on time, you may not have enough time for your entire meeting if someone else has a meeting after you. So, start on time, um, introduce people as necessary. You know, if it's someone new or if you have a guest in the meeting, it's always, you know, good measure or respectful to introduce them at the beginning of the meeting. So everybody can see who's there. Um, encourage participation. Um, this is important because you never want people to feel like they didn't uh, have a chance to make a contribution on a certain topic or you know, they didn't get to vote or whatever it may be. So you always wanna encourage participation. However, you wanna maintain control. It's your meeting. You're the manager, you're the leader, um, you're the one running the meeting, so you need to maintain control. What that means is, if people are being disruptive, don't allow it, you know, you need to regain control of the meeting. It's your baby. Um, Force decisions if necessary. You know, we just discussed that in some meetings, decisions will need to be made. And there will be some situations where you may have to say, well, we're not leaving until we decide. I've been in meetings like that before where they, the, the leader was like, we can't leave the meeting until we decide, we've come to a decision. So, and that may be because the next meeting may not be until next month or next quarter. So there will be some times where you have to force decisions to be made for your meetings, if necessary. And then uh, before you close, you want to summarize the meeting 
if there's any follow-ups that need to happen, this will be the opportunity where you summarize that before you close the meeting, just so everyone uh, leaves knowing what they're supposed to do, if there's anything they're supposed to do. After the meeting, notify others of the outcome. Who might you want to notify? Floor staff. Floor staff. Who yeah. other like floor supervisors? Yeah, and then they can disperse the information out to their um, employees. Anybody else? Top management. I would always, if I was running a meeting, I would always have a discussion with my manager, the person I reported to after the meeting, just to let them know what happened, uh, either verbally or in a short email. We had a meeting today, this is what was discussed. If it was something important, very important, I would probably verbally go in and have a meeting with them to discuss what happened in the meeting. Um, so, you know, you may want to notify the person you report to or top management of the meeting. You may want to notify um, your colleagues, so other managers, um, because it may be something that they need to discuss with their staff as well in the next meeting that they have. And um, prepare mi the minutes right after the meeting. Why is that? That way you have a paper trail of what you talked about in the meeting. You have a paper trail. Nothing um, is forgotten. Um, and it, again, if you prepare the meetings right after, it remains a priority. It doesn't go to the bottom of the stack of things to do. So what should the minutes include? Minutes should always include what time the meeting started and what time it ends. It should include who was there, who was absent. It should include a statement that the previous minutes were read and approved. It should be a brief discussion about each item on the agenda and if there was a vote or an agreement or disagreement, that should also be recorded as well. If there's any decisions made, should be recorded. If there's any um, to-do actions that are gonna take place, should also be recorded on the minutes. And the date, place, and time of the next meeting should be included also in the minutes. So what should we not do if we're running the meeting? Don't dominate the meeting. Now we talked about maintaining control, right? But we don't want to dominate the meeting. This is important. We, we want to make it seem like it's not just us as the manager just barking out things to everyone else. We want to make it feel like it's a collaborative meeting. So you don't want to dominate the meeting. Not only that, people will be less inclined to pay attention if you're just dominating the meeting. So they feel like there's no reason for them to be there. So they're going to go to sleep or talk to each other or like something on Facebook if you try to dominate the meeting. Don't state your opinion before you give others a chance. Why, why is this key? If you're doing the meeting and you're the manager and you're stating your opinion before everybody else, everybody else is gonna go with your thoughts instead of voicing their own opinions. You don't wanna persuade or, or not give people the opportunity to voice their own opinion. So you're right. You, know, you wanna give them the chance to give their opinion first. Because you're right. You're their, you know, you're their supervisor, you're their manager. They're, yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, what you said. That. Right. <laughs> Not only that, you want to make sure that you allow creativity. Give them an the opportunity to be creative and come up with their own thoughts and ideas and opinions. Don't tell somebody they're wrong, especially not in a meeting. Uh, that does so many things, it's just so wrong. Um, you don't want to embarrass anybody or belittle anyone. Um, you want to maintain respect. If they're wrong, okay, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. Don't do it in a meeting. They'll never come back to your meetings. <laughs> um, 
don't lecture or instruct. Again, you know, all of these things um, go back to trying to dominate the meeting. And that's not what we want to do. We want to make sure that the attendees feel like they're contributing in some type of way and that their presence means something. So don't instruct their lecture and don't argue. This goes back to maintaining control. Sure, you can debate and disagree, but to argue, nothing's probably going to get solved. So you don't want to argue. <clears throat> no sarcasm. As enticing as it may be to use sarcasm, don't use it. Um, don't take sides. Again, this is because you don't want people to automatically jump on your side just because you state you know, your opinion. Um, let the group debate and have a conversation before you try to take sides. Um, problem members. You may have some or one in your group during a meeting and nip it in the bud. If someone's talking or, or being disruptive, call them on it or tell them to leave or whatever, however you choose to handle it. Make sure you handle it. Don't, don't hesitate. Do not allow the meeting to run over time. Why is this important? Not try to do this in class. You don't want the meeting to run over time because just like you want people to be on time and respect your time, you want to respect their time too. Um, and running over time, you're not respecting their time. And not only that, this might show that you're not having an effective meeting. If you're not able to stay within the time that you plan to have the meeting, you're always running over time and running out of time, then maybe you need to change how you're conducting your meetings. Well, could that be like organization also? Like yeah. if there wasn't organized? Right, right. <coughs> um, so yeah, maybe you gotta go back to the, the drawing board or, and become more organized on how you're doing your meetings. Maybe you're saying that your meeting's on an hour when it needs to be an hour and a half. Whatever it is, something's going wrong if you're always running over time. Um, and running over time, you may not accomplish everything that you, you need to accomplish. And then you have an issue because it's, what am I gonna do? Do I have to schedule another meeting or are we gonna have to wait until the next month to figure this out? So it's very important not to run over time for, for many reasons. And that goes hand in hand with starting on time. If you're gonna start on time, it's more than likely you're gonna go right. over. Which, right, which is, it's, that's why it's important that you start on time because you are, you're right, you're, you're more likely to run over time when you don't start on time. Um, don't try to accomplish too much at one meeting. Again, this may happen when you do that. You may run over time when you try to accomplish too much. When you're preparing your agenda, you really have to analyze it and think about the things that you're discussing and in your mind think about, okay, about how long is that going to take for us to discuss that. Um, and that may mean, at the point where you're putting together your agenda, that may mean cutting something off and um, you know, putting it on to the next meeting to make sure that you don't try to accomplish too many things. That's going to require you to prioritize what's most important for you to discuss in the meeting. Um, you know, there's probably going to be some issues that are really pressing that you know need to be on the agenda and you know it may take a while. So maybe you're only going to have two things on your agenda because you want to make sure that you take care of those things and, and that you're not accomplishing too many things at one time. Um, in the event that you are not running the meeting and you're an attendee, or so that you know what to expect from your attendees, here are some tips for them. Come prepared to participate. You don't want to just be thinking that you're just going to show up at the meeting. Again, this, this is why it's important that they see the agenda so that they are prepared to participate. So make sure they see the agenda ahead of time. Arrive on time. We already talked about why that's important. Be respectful and listen to what other people have to say and try to understand their, their point or their opinion, even if you don't necessarily agree with it. Look for hidden agendas. You know, we talked about reasons why we have meetings and one of the reasons was persuasion. As a manager, we may try to have that meeting to, to use persuasion well, those attendees are going to be looking for hidden agendas. How many times have you went into a meeting and said, oh gosh, you know what we're going to talk about today? They're going to try to talk about this new policy where we can't smoke anymore. I wonder what they're going to say. Hidden agendas, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, remain ra rational and assertive, um, even when you're being harassed. Again, a meeting is not a place to fight you know, and argue. It's a place where you need to remain rational so that you can make good decisions and you know, really problem solve. Which means you have to be willing to compromise sometimes. There will be meetings where you have to vote um, and you don't want to be in a meeting for three hours voting because no one's willing to compromise and you keep having two, 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 or three, three, or however many people you have. So come willing to compromise. Uh, last thing, accept special assignments. A lot of times um, at the conclusion of the meeting, there'll be some action items, things to do. Don't be afraid as a meeting attendee to, to volunteer to look into something further or, or research something. Don't be a problem with me. That's pretty self-explanatory. Again, all that's gonna do is prolong the meeting and we're trying to run effective meetings, right? Ask questions. If something's not clear, the meeting is a perfect place to ask because when we're working, we don't have time necessarily. Um, respect, be respectful. There's gonna be some uh, opinions that make no sense or that are unpopular. You still need to be respectful and that's gonna require you to separate facts from perceptions. Somebody may perceive to be a certain way or their opinion may have perceived to be a certain way, but we, would, we need to make sure that we understand that that's gonna be separate from what the facts really are. Um, and disagree without being disagreeable. Does everybody, does that make sense? You can disagree you can with say, people. I, dis I, don't, I don't have the same feeling about that situation, but you know, let's keep it civil and move it on. Right, something disagree else. without being disagreeable. Problem attendees, we gotta look out for these people. These are the people we have to make sure we have control with. Your latecomers, people always come in late. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm attendees, to look up. <laughs> attendees who offend others, um, intimidators, hostile or angry attendees, people who don't participate. They can be problem attendees, they're just dead weight. You wanna make sure everybody's participating. So if you have a non-participant, at, at some point after a meeting, you may wanna pull them to the side and say, you know, I've noticed that you don't speak much in meetings, is everything okay? Do you have an opinion about anything? You know, talk to your non-participant. It might be, but but just check and make sure. You know, some people are just not gonna say anything even if they um, have a problem or an issue or something. They just may not wanna speak up. Some people aren't confident about what they say. Um, side conversationalist, comics, sure it's okay to have a, hum a sense of humor, sometimes it's not appropriate. Um, motor mouths and destroyers, problem attendees. These are the ones we have to make sure we have control over. Um, and we'll talk about committee members and end it here. Committee uh, meeting is going to be obviously a smaller group of people than what your normal meeting might be that is formed for a specific reason or issue or, or task. Um, and so when you're putting together a committee, a committee meeting, and as a manager, you may be the one organizing this, putting together this meeting. You need to make sure that you choose someone to chair these meetings or to lead this meeting. And it may be you, or you may choose someone else. Um, is the membership going to be voluntary or required? What's going to be the goal or the mission of the committee? Um, is there going to be a report? If so, when is it going to be due? Will there be interim reports? And more than likely, those reports will come to you. Um, and last, if it's a decision-making committee, what options and alternatives are going to be um, <coughs> considered? And you might say, you know, what type of committee member meetings might we have? Well, again, the, the spring fling today is an example of something that might be a committee meeting. It might have been a spring fling committee, which I'm sure there probably was, to organize this event. Smaller group of people um, put together to handle a certain task. Um, and we'll stop there because I don't want to go over time. Um, do you guys? Uh, we went through that fairly quickly. So, does anyone have any questions about what we discussed? No, but most jobs don't do with that. But you just put a